Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about discrete time systems. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what a discrete time system is. I'll show you some examples, both sort of conceptual examples and then some uh, precise examples using equations. Uh, and then uh, describe the, uh, some of the vocabulary, technical vocabulary we use to, to classify systems or talk about specifically the properties of these systems uh, that we use in discrete time. Okay, so uh, moving on to our, our whiteboard. Again, the, the topic for today is uh, basically fundamentals about discrete time systems. And again, uh, this is sort of the other half. We talked about signals in our first class. This is the other half. What's a system? A system, a discrete time system is anything that transforms, uh, transforms an input signal to an output signal. So some input signal x of n uh, to an output signal y of n. And the way we often will draw these is we'll, we'll show this as a kind of block diagram where here's our input coming into the system, which for today we'll just put an s here. We may get more specific or use different letters to show different systems. And then this is y of n is the output. And that can seem very vague in general, so let's talk about some specific choices that could be. For example, the, the uh, input here could be the uh, transactions you make at the bank. Transactions. And when I do that, my output would be my bank balance, right? By accumulating all the deposits and withdrawals into my account, I would end up, the output might be a balance. Uh, another example, I mentioned it following up on one of my uh, examples from before, if, if my input is some measurements of the scallop population, right? I, I live in New Bedford, a city that's uh, very, or the scallop fishing industry is a very big industry. And so there are people that go out, use photographs of the ocean bottom to count how many scallops are out there available to fishermen. And people in our marine science lab uh, do this. The output, you might use that population data, process it with some system, and come up with an estimate of how many scallops you can harvest to keep the fishery sustainable. So you might go out and say, if we've counted so many scallops, how many can we allow the fishermen to bring in and capture so that there will still be more scallops in the future uh, to keep this going, what's called a sustainable harvest. Uh, another good example is, is that, that, that gets used a lot. In fact, it gets used so often, we may often don't even know it, is we can take an audio signal with echo. So some, in some situations, my audio will have some echo in it, and I can have the, the, the audio with the echo removed. So these are just, to make these, these things, some typical examples, uh, and your long distance lines do this all the time with echo. Uh, when I was growing up a long, long time ago, it was common to get echoey signals on a phone, a long distance phone line. That almost never happens anymore. And when it does, the filters quickly figure out how to remove the echo. Uh, so we, and we hope we'll probably even see that in one of the MATLAB labs we'll do this semester. Let's make some examples uh, more precise to say, well, that's, that's nice to talk about in words, but in engineering, we usually want to put equations on things. So here are some, some more precise examples. The first one we could say, and the way we generally specify these systems is by writing an equation in some form or relating them to an equation between the input and output. And this is uh, often called a difference equation. So for one example I could make, I could say my output now is equal to one seventh of my input now plus my input yesterday plus my input the day before 
and so on for today and the previous six days. So seven days total, which is today and the si up to six days before it. Oh, I'm going to have to break this onto two lines. Okay, so in this case, it, and it's an important skill to develop going back and forth between concepts and equations. And this one I might look at it and say, well, the output is a, uh, the, the output in this case is uh, the average of the current input or the seven most recent input values, the current and six before it. Right, all together, if I count this up, if I go over here, I'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So by adding them up, then dividing by seven, I'm computing what's called a running average over the current and seven previous values. Why this one is interesting is to say, well, if x of n measures the number of new cases of a disease, so if I'm testing a population looking for a disease, then x of n is the number of new cases of a disease on a day, on the on each day, then what we've come what we found here, this is the running average. Of new cases, right? So we're looking at, well, and we've seen, and in, in we often see that day-to-day uh, -day numbers can be very noisy. So by doing this, we'll, and we'll see why later this semester, this smooths things out. This is a, a very simple example of something we call a filter. The uh, another example, more simple one, that's closer to the the bank account examples. We could say, my output now is equal to one point oh three times my previous input, or my previous output, plus x of n. And this is, again, a general equation, which we'll, we'll generally work with, but it's always good to be linking them back to examples of it. This could be a very simple model for a bank account with 3% interest, right? If I have 3% interest, I take, if this was, let me uh, say, if this is my balance today, this was my balance yesterday, And I guess this is kind of a fantasy world where people will pay me 3% interest per day. They're lucky to get that per year right now. But this is this is 3% interest, right? If I multiply by 1.03, it's like adding 3% to the old balance. And then this is the transactions, right? If this is positive, it means I deposited money. If it's negative, it means I withdrew money. So those are, are uh, some simple examples. Of, of, of when we talk about systems with equations. This is also a good example because it brings up two very important terms we'll use over and over again to talk about equations. This first one up here is an example that we call non-recursive. Whereas this one is a recursive difference equation. And the, the difference between them is if it's rec a recursive difference equation is one where the value for the output now is defined in terms of previous output. So because y of n appears, you know, the, the current value of y of n depends on the previous value of the output, then we say it's recursive. It's defined in terms of itself. Whereas in the first equation, y of n is only defined in terms of x of n. There's no y of n's in this, so we could say it's non-recursive. Now, there's some, some tricky footnotes to that we may come back to, and we'll see this leads to important ideas later with impulse responses in the semester. So if you come across that in another class, I did want to mention that these ideas are linked, but we'll say more about it later. But again, to sum up, the, the two main, the main ideas from today is what's a system? What's a discrete time system? It's anything that turns an input signal to an output signal. We saw some, some different examples, and, that, uh, and conceptually, of things like if I take my bank transactions as my inputs, my output might be my bank balance. Uh, or, the, or the second example I've just just had up here a second ago, right? This is a very simple model that one might use to process uh, disease models to get a, a smoother or, or more, uh, a more reliable estimate of how many new cases of a disease are out there by averaging data over several days instead of just taking the measurement from day to day. Uh, so we'll stop here, and I'll, uh, the next video we'll talk a little bit more about other properties of systems, uh, and then some ways we connect systems as well. Okay, talk to you later.